Hi everyone, this is Satyajit. Welcome to my channel, Cloud Journey with Satyajit. So today we are going to discuss about if our .pem file, right, the private key deleted or misplaced from our side and how we can access to an EC2 instance. Okay, so generally EC2 instance, uh, we can authenticate using two mode. One is uh, password based authentications and another one is the key based authentications. Generally, the best practices and everywhere we are using key-based authentications. So when we try to access one server, right? So we need to specify uh, the private key. Okay, when you're trying to access, you need to specify the private key. And public key will be present in the authorized key file of that particular server. We'll just going to see that. So when the public key and the correct private key match, then we are able to authenticate to the server. Okay, if any key, any of the key, like let's say if you miss the private key or if you miss the public key, then either way, you cannot access the server. Okay. So I have created two server. Let's say I'm, I'm just logging to the test one server and I'm using the key, uh, this one, uh, private key, okay, private key dot pim. Like, uh, you know, like whenever you are going to create an EC2 instance, it will specify, okay, you need to download the key or you can create, sorry, you can create your own key or you can use your existing key. Without key, you cannot access to the server. Okay. So now let me log into the TC2 instance. Okay. I already connected. Uh, let me do that. Okay. So let me little bit zoom it. Uh, I'm, I'm going to specify the key. The key is there in my download folder. And then I need to specify the IP. Okay, so here if you see, I specify the PEM key. This is my private key. Okay, so now I am currently logged in. If you type who am I, it will specify which user because I specify the EC2 user. Now, where is the public key present? Okay, so in each user, there is a directory called it's a hidden file dot ssh it will be automatically created if you go inside that ssh directory there will be a file called authorized underscore keys okay so here it is present the public key if i just cat it so see this is the this is the public key here you mentioned this is the public key of which key private key private key means i given the name private key okay that is the pem file so that private key file this is the public key so we are specifying the private key and public key is present here. So we are able to authenticate. So if either of way, if you are, uh, if the private key you uh, misplaced or this public key someone deleted from here, you cannot able to authenticate to the keys. Okay. So let us understand, like, let's say uh, my key, the private key got deleted or I misplaced the private key. Private key is not available with me then I cannot log into the server. Okay, So if I cannot log into the server, let's say some critical application is running on that server. Okay. And uh, suddenly the application got stopped. Okay. And uh, uh, the applications team uh, wants me to check and verify whether application is running or not. As I do not have the key. Okay. And, and the key based authentication is enabled. There is no password based authentication is enabled. So then, uh, then I cannot log into the server and I cannot verify. Let's say that SSM agent is not there. I cannot uh, log in using the session manager. All the options are not present. Only I'm going to access using the key and the key got deleted. Then there is very critical situations. I cannot log in. So we will discuss now how you are going to access those keys. Okay. Let's say the private key deleted from us. Uh, how we are going to access it okay uh, i will give you two scenarios let's say public key got deleted okay so let me delete the public key here so now uh, uh, this is authorized key public key deleted means i cannot but let's say uncommented i i will comment it okay uh, so here uh, i will just comment the key okay if i comment the key means it is not being used okay i'm able to log in but i will just exit out from there and if i specify the key now if i specify i cannot log in see it's saying permissions denied i specify the key but i cannot log into there uh, because public is commented public key is not working now i specify the private key though i have the private key but still i cannot log in it so now how to retrieve that how i will able to log in let's understand the situations from this ec2 instance some critical application is running and I'm unable to access those server. 
now applications team wants to start the applications or uh, just validate it so how i'm going to see that how i'm going to do that okay so what we need to do i need to verify that instance is in which availability zone it is running so this test one it is running on ap south 1a so i need to create another instance or if any other instance exists existing instance running that should be run in the same availability zone we can call as a rescue instance or something some ec2 instance by using the help of that ec2 instance we are going to uh, retrieve that okay so now um, the first step is we need to create an ec2 instance which is in the same availability zone so for that uh, uh, by the help like to do the expedite the process i already create the ec2 instance or else you can create another ec2 instance in the same availability zone first we have to create it second is we need to stop the actual server okay so test one it is in uh, there is a problem for test one so i need to stop the server okay so you can just go to instance state and stop it okay so once it's stopped let us log into the test2 server okay so this is the public ip address and if you see here the key pair also the private key file so you need to uh, log into that test2 server ssh hyphen i downloads private key then uh, specify the ec2 user and key okay then you are able to log into the so let me go to the root user okay so now I am logged into the test2 server, which is in same availability zone of the existing one. Let us verify the first instance is stopped or not. Okay, so test1 server. So test1 server is now stopped. Next step will be to detach the root volume. Whatever the volume is there, the root volume that we need to detach. So you need to go to the storage and go to the volume. I remember, the, so do one thing. So you remember the which what is the mount path of that like what is the root volume mount path so how we can verify just uh you need to go to the test server test one server and storage just verify so it is a xvda slash dev slash xvda remember that okay so now you need to go to that particular volume and volume should be detached okay you need to detach the volume okay so now the volume is in detached available state because volume is an available state. Now, second step is we need to attach that volume to the rescue instance, which instance we have created. So you can select that volume attached to the volume to this test two server, which is running. Okay. So just verify test two server, it's running state. Okay. And here any mount point you can keep. So let's say default is STF, it is taking, let's do it. Okay. Attach the volume. So what we, what I did now, the root volume the problematic instance okay i stop that instance i detach the root i specify where it is mounted it is slash dev slash svda and then i detach that root volume and attach that root volume into the rescue instance okay so then uh why we created a same availability zone because if you create in different availability zone in situ instance that volume cannot be attached so because of that we created the rescue instance in the same availability zone okay so now we can go to the command prompt and you can just verify lsblk okay so lsblk means list all the block devices so now xvda this is the root volume of the rescue instance itself so now another volume xvdf which is the root volume of the uh, the problematic instance so this is uh this is just uh the storage we have added it okay so the now the next step is we need to create a temporary mount point that so don't specify generally what happen we do whenever you attach one storage we need to provide on file system don't do that because if you do the file system so what will happen it will wipe all the data so all the thing existing data it will be wiped out so without so don't provide any file system just mount it so you can just use command mount hyphen o okay uh, then it's a xfs file system because how to verify the file system to say uh, df and th used this is the root volume xfs so it's the same amazon linux i used okay so that is the same xfs file system only okay so what you can do the use you can command mount hyphen 
O and file system is XFS hyphen O no UUID and XVDF one because if you see here XVDF is the root volume but uh, if it is of 8 GB but they have created the partitions and all 8 GB attached to XVDF one so I specify XVDF one and slash test partitions we are just creating slash test okay just created okay uh, amount pen doesn't exist means slash test I did not create a directory so I can have to create one directory MPDR test okay and then I need to mount it so now the mount point created you can verify df and th so test is mounted so this is nothing but a root volume this xvdf1 is nothing but the root volume of the uh, the problematic instance so what i need to do i can go to this cd test okay here inside that again everything will be there if you do ls right all the home directory, everything will be there because this is the home directory slash etc, everything of that problematic server. So what I need to do, I CD, you can go to the home. ECT user. Okay, here it is the correct one. Uh, ECT user. Then here you can go to the ls la. You need to do the ls la. Here the SSH directory will be there then here the authorized key just open the authorized key field and it is commented okay just do uncomment okay do uncomment and save it now our thing is done okay so now what you need to do you can come back and after that unmount it because it was uncommented right sorry it was commented now we uncomment it now you can just do the unmount unmount of this uh, test directory it is unmounted now detach the volume okay so detach the external volume which you created right so you can just go to the test to server this xvdf volume id ends with 7a okay so now we need to detach it select it actions and detach the volume and detach it so now it is in use earlier and if you see now it is in available state wait for some more time it should say it is in available state Okay, now it's an available state. Now attached to the actual instance, okay, which is actual instance test one, right? So now just go to the test one server. So here the remember, I told you to remember that volume, right? So slash step it is XVDA. So into specify that and attach the volume. So now my volume got attached to the test one server. Now it's time to start the test one server, okay? Instant and start it. Once you started it, so it will take some time to boot up the instance. So then post that we can just verify the connectivity. By that meantime, just uh, log out from this uh, uh, rescue instance. Okay. So let us wait the instance. Uh, it let's let's it goes to the running state. Okay. So now it's in running state. So Amazon Linux booting uh, booting speed is uh, the booting process is faster. So how to verify? You can go to the actions, go to monitor and troubleshoot, get instance screenshot. So now login prompt is coming means it means it is all the booting process completed. Though it is two by two checks is not passed, but the booting process is completed and it will take some time to pass the uh, status check. So now you can just go to the public IP address. Okay, now we need to specify the uh, my private key SSH hyphen I downloads private key EC2 user and I specify. So if you can see now I am able to log into the private EC2 instance. So by the help of the rescue instance, I just connected and by the help of that, I'm able to access the steps are first, we need to uh, create one rescue instance in the same availability zone. Okay. And the problematic instance, we need to stop it. Okay. And uh, before stopping it, remember where it is mounted. What is the root volume? Sometimes it is slash dave slash xvda. Somewhere it is with slash dev slash sda. Okay. So remember that. After that, detach the root volume. Attach that root volume to the rescue instance. And don't provide in file system because if you provide some file system, the, all the data will be wiped out. Then create a temporary mount point and temporary mount it. Then go to that mount point path and verify uh, the commented. So we already commented that, right? So you can just uncomment it and uh, again that uh, unmount that volume. Okay. And then uh, 
detach it from their uh, rescue instance and attach it again to this uh, the problematic server then start it you can able to access this is the thing when we deleted the let's say we have deleted this uh, sorry we missed the public key let's say the private key the pem file itself let's say the pem file private key itself deleted from your side okay then how to do that if the private key itself deleted from your side then how to retrieve that okay that we are going to see in the next videos here like just understand uh, the same step we need to follow if the private key deleted then uh, it means the private the pem file is not present with you so what we need to do we need to create another ec2 instance the same step in the same availability zone and remember that instance should be use the different key but in my cases i cannot show you now because both the test one and test two using the private key so i am assuming private key private key in the sense this one my key pair private key okay mm, i'm talking about this private key so uh, i'm assuming that private key deleted permanently okay if deleted means the rescue instance also i cannot access it right so be remember uh, whenever let's say this test one test two so i cannot log in because the private key uh, associated to that the pom file deleted so what i need to do i need to create a, another ec2 instance using the different key okay not the private key different key means whose private key dot pem file should be present with us okay once we create that then the same step will follow like detach the root volume attach it okay and we need to create we need to that public key right public key of that new server we need to copy so that we are going to show you in the different videos okay but before that please practice it and if you have any questions let me know on the comments then i will help you out thank you for watching my videos